All right, let's talk Oklahoma Sooners football. Of course, we're getting ready for spring ball. We're getting ready to put pads on. It's kind of an exciting time. But I think Oklahoma, one of the things we've seen from this program, especially over this past 12 months or so, what Venables has done, is he's made a lot of moves, a lot of decisions that I think looked good originally, but over time they look better and better. And we've got another report to highlight a move that he made recently that has literally looked a lot better. Let's get right into the article, then we'll talk about it more on the other side. This is according to 24-7 Sports. All right, the 24-7 Sports Network dropped an updated top two, uh, 24-7 player rankings for the 2025 recruiting class on Wednesday. One current Oklahoma commit got some good news, to say the least. Ryan Foje was one of, if not the biggest riser in the updated rankings. A former three-star Foje. Miles, is that right, Foje? Yeah. Okay, Foje is now considered one of the top 80 players in the country. Now, Foje isn't just rising from three-star to four-star status. He checks in as the number 80 overall recruit nationally and is considered one of the top 10 offensive tackles in America for the 2025 cycle. All right, so this is obviously a big jump for Foje, big jump for Oklahoma. Venables and his recruiting staff looks really good because they went after him. He was not ranked nearly this high. Mize, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. But first, Sooners fans, in the comment section below, obviously, Great recruiting class in 2024, great new additions, but let's focus on who's going to step up when it really matters, when it puts on the pads. So give us the one player you think, one newcomer to Oklahoma, who you think is going to have a big impact this upcoming season, first at spring, and then, of course, when the regular season starts. Best new Oklahoma addition that you're expecting, put them in the comment section below. But, Miles, give me your thoughts on this news and what it means for Oklahoma going forward. Yeah, Nick. Ryan Foje, you tricky name, but you got 100% right. Okay. Uh, he is really looking great. I'm so excited because like you said, Brent Venables takes that approach where he kind of goes and he sees guys. He, it, we're talking about t- the state of Texas here, a state that has a lot of talent, has a lot of teams in it. The Oklahoma and Brent Venables, they come in and they kind of, you know, say, all right, the top talent, it's going to be hard to, you know, take the, you know, the five stars of the world away from the schools like Texas, the Texas A&Ms of the world. But if we can go in here and get some of this undervalued, undervalued talent, bring it back to Oklahoma, and then that is where we really will prosper. They've done just that in a guy like Foje. Getting him when he's the three-star. The Texases probably aren't looking at a guy like Foje at that point. You go in, show him, you see the, the talent, you see the potential in him, then your investment pays off. Now he's one of the top 10 offensive tackles in the country. He's one of the top 15 players in the state of Texas. I think this is a really great move because this isn't even the first time they've done this. Owen Holenbeck, another O-lineman from Texas as well, came in. He's a three-star. I'm expecting him to get a boost down the line as well. This is another guy who looks really impressive. But Oklahoma, again and again, they've gone from time and time again to get undervalued talent all throughout the country. And Brent Venables, he knows what he's looking for. He did a great job when he was at Clemson. He did this kind of stuff all the time, bringing in undervalued talent and really getting the most out of them. But they haven't even gotten on campus yet. He just sees guys he likes and just naturally being able to have that eye for that kind of talent. They're already rising up the boards. So you got to feel good if you're an Oklahoma fan that you trust the moves that Coach Brent Venables is doing. And I love, first of all, the beef they're putting on this offensive line, getting ready for the SEC. I think thinking ahead and getting 2025 guys this team is going to be set for the SEC for years to come with all of these high, high-tier offensive line picks coming down the pipeline. I am ready to see them hit the field this spring, see what spring ball brings, but I'm even more excited for 2025 to see what some guys like Foje and what Hollenbeck can do coming down the pipe. And it's interesting, right? So I'm pulling up these numbers here. This is from 24-7 Sports. So Oklahoma, back in August of 2023, offered Foje, right? then Nebraska, then Tennessee, then Maryland, then Baylor. And this is this is like by December time frame. A&M didn't come until December 30th, right? Arkansas didn't come until January, right? Uh, the Texas Longhorns didn't offer him until January 20th. And then, of course, you had a bunch of other teams come in before he committed February time. So, again, Venables was early. He was the first guy. He recognized something here. And this is one of the real important things that can really give you that edge in recruiting. Because one of the things, and it's it's kind of obvious when you think about it, when you talk about the big name guys that everyone knows as a top prospect, a lot of the top programs, Oklahoma, Texas, LSU, Alabama, Auburn, right? 
the traditionally big name programs, they're going to identify them early and put a lot of time and resources to commit to getting that recruit to sign on the line that is dotted. If you can identify a kid before he's a top recruit, you don't have to spend as much resources and you still get him. So you're saving time and money. You're saving recruiting resources, right? Getting a kid that's going to be a top recruit by identifying him before he's noticed. That is the real value because then you can now use those saved resources to go after other recruits and other transfers and upgrade your roster, right? It's the same thing in the National Football League, where if you can draft quality players in the fifth round and you know you can do well there, it means you can focus on using your first, second, and third round picks, your other picks, to address other issues you have in your scouting that maybe aren't as good. That's exactly what we're seeing from Oklahoma and Venables here. And again, it doesn't make the big name headlines. No one talks about it on ESPN or Fox Sports or whatever. But it's these little things that when you add them up all together over the weeks, the months, the years, and the off seasons that you build a program. Clemson, I think I love that the fact you brought up Clemson. Clemson was solid. They were fine. They were okay. And then Debo Sweeney comes in and they keep doing they're fine. They're okay. They're solid. Venables, of course, is there with them. And then it just suddenly, boom, they just pop. And then suddenly the top program in the country, people are like, whoa, they came out of nowhere. No, it took off seasons and years of moves just like this, finding undervalued talent. And then when it all hits in a tidal wave, it comes out and explodes. That's what Oklahoma is building right now. That is Venable's strategy. I think it's pretty clear and obvious, and he's doing a great job executing on it. Yeah, Nick, and one more interesting point I found here to end on. I think it's really interesting. A guy like Foje, you said Venables is early. He was early in the recruiting cycle. How early he was he? When Foje came to Oklahoma's camp this summer, he didn't even have any tape for varsity. He hadn't played a snap on varsity football. Coach Venables saw this guy. He said, hey, listen, I really like what I see. I want to offer you. I just want you to play your first varsity game. He went out. He dominated. They offered him. So they were earlier than the guy didn't even make the top level varsity team. Okay. Yet I, they just so, so hit this nail on the head. It's like you said, if a guy believes in you that early on, it's really hard to pass him by when it's time to sign on the dotted line. So I really think Venables and Co. did a great job in getting Foje. I think it's going to be a big get for them down the line.